In this lesson, we'll explore how to render white, yellow, and rose gold. In our second row of circles, we're going to learn how to render white gold. We'll start by selecting the first circle with the selection tool, and then we copy the colors of the black disk with the eyedropper. We click on the gradient tool and rotate and move the shade into place inside the disk, using the handle. Now we head over to the right in the gradient section, where we'll modify the color. To change the darkest hue, we'll double-click on it and select a lighter shade from the swatches. Then we repeat it for some other swatches as well, and drop what we don't want. To create the effect of smooth edges, we go up to our first disc, select it with the selection tool, and copy it by dragging it with our mouse, while pressing the Option key if you're using Mac, or the Alt key if you're using Windows. We then ungroup it by pressing the Shift, Command, and G keys if you're using Mac, or the Shift, Control, and G keys if you're using Windows. Then we select and drag the highlights and shadow shapes on top of our disc. The shapes appear underneath our disk, and to bring them up to the top, we go up to the Object menu, Arrange, and bring them to Front. Now they're visible on top of the disk. We don't need the black disk, so we'll select it and press the Delete key. Our shadow shape is a bit dark, so we'll select it and head over to the swatches, where we'll pick a lighter shade of grey. Now we'll render our next circle to be a white, high shine gold ball. So we select it with the selection tool, and with the eyedropper, we copy the shade of the flat white gold disk. Then we move over to the gradient area and select radial. Just like we did before, we manipulate the gradient color with the swatches until we're happy with the result. Our white gold ball now has a nice reflective light around the edges and a highlight on top. In the next circle, we'll render satin white gold, and to keep the same tonality of grays like in our shiny white gold ball, we select the circle with the selection tool, and then with the eyedropper, we copy the gradient. Now we move over to the gradient area and manipulate the color, making the highlights and reflections less reflective. With the three new swatches ready, we'll add them to the library just like we did for the black gradients. We'll start with the flat disk, selecting it with the selection tool. Then we click on the arrow next to the swatch, select Add to Swatches, double click on our new swatch, and name it Flat White Gold, and click OK. Then we select and save the next circle, and save the swatch the same way. We'll call it Shiny White Gold Ball. And then we'll save the last swatch. Calling it Opaque White Gold Ball. You can see how the name of the swatch appears as you hover over it with the mouse. To create the drop shadows, we repeat the same process as we did for the black gold discs and balls. By first grouping the three shapes of the disc, selecting them and pressing the Command and G keys if you're using Mac, and the Control and G keys if you're using Windows. Then we select all three shapes and go up to Effect, scroll down to Stylize, and select Drop Shadow. We'll start with the black Fine Shadow, leaving the color black the opacity at 75%, the offset at minus 0.03, 0.03, and the blur at zero. And then we select the disks again and return up to effects, stylize, and drop shadow. To create that nice lighter shadow, we leave the color black, change the opacity to 35%, set the offsets, 
at minus 0.13 and 0.13 and the blur at 0.1. We'll check how it looks in the preview and then we click OK. If we want to check what drop shadow settings an object has, we select it with the selection tool and then move over to appearance at the right. If you can't find it in your workspace, you can make it appear by selecting it in the Windows menu. In Appearance, we click on Drop Shadow and a window pops up where you can see all the settings. You can also modify the shadow settings here and just click OK when you're done. To remove the drop shadow, you need to click on it near the FX letters and then click on the little trash can. To restore our shadow, we go up to Edit and select Undo Remove Appearance. The Undo and Redo tools are really useful for any task you want to undo or remake. Now we're going to render the third row of circles in yellow gold. So we'll select the first round with the selection tool and then copy the color of the white gold disk with the eyedropper. With the gradient tool, we rotate and move the gradient into place. In the gradient area, we'll start by removing the darkest grey swatch and substitute it with the dark brown. Then we remove one of the medium greys and substitute it with an orange. This orange is too intense for our yellow gold, so we'll modify it by double-clicking on it. In the swatch box that appears, we'll click on the color palette where we can make the shades less vivid by dragging the bars on the three gradient lines. When we're happy with the color, we click with the mouse outside of the palette window. Now we'll copy the swatch over to the other side. So we'll begin by removing the medium gray, and then we drag our new orange while pressing the Option key if you're using Mac, or the Alt key for Windows. To give our gold a warm sunlight look, we're also going to add a yellow. So we select one and drag it up to the gradient. Also, this yellow is too intense, so we'll modify it the same way we did with the orange, until it has a nice, delicate shade. Now we copy it over to the other side and fine-tune the gradient until we have a nice fade effect. When the shade is done, we save it as flat, shiny yellow gold. In the next circle, we're going to render as a high shine yellow gold ball. Since we already created a nice color with our flat disk, and we want to keep the hues consistent, we'll copy it and change it into a radial gradient. that we'll fine-tune by moving our swatches around a little bit. Now we save it and call it shiny yellow gold ball. The last circle in this row will render as a satin yellow gold ball by copying the color in the high shine ball using the eyedropper and modifying it in the gradient section, making the highlights and darks less prominent. Now that we're happy with the result, we save the color and call it opaque yellow gold ball. To create our highlight, we copy and drag the disk like we learned into two overlapping shapes. Select them and cut them with the pathfinder. 
To make the highlight white, we simply copy the attributes of this shape and move it onto our disk. Then we create our shadow shape like we learned it. And give it a dark brown color and removing the outline. To finalize our yellow gold disc and balls, we first group the disc, then we select all three shapes and go up to Effect and select Drop Shadow. The last set of circles will render in rose gold, following the exact same steps as we did for our yellow gold. Copying the yellow gold disc gradient, rotating it, and moving it into place. Modifying the color in the gradient section, and so on. For the pink gold, we'll modify the orange to become a medium dusty pink and the yellow to be a light pink, modifying the colors in the color palette. Now we save our new swatch as flat, shiny pink gold. Then we move on to creating our high shine and opaque rose gold balls, using the techniques you just learned. At the end, we add a highlight and a shadow to our flat disc, remembering to group them before we add the drop shadow.
Then we select all three shapes and go up to Effect and select Drop Shadow. Congratulations! You now know how to render the main precious metal colors and use several tools in Illustrator.